Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and this is the third and final chapter of the epic saga that is the Marvel United Multiverse unboxing trilogy, because there was too much to cram in one video, almost three hours worth of stuff. So, without further ado, the finale. Here it is. And finally, the moment I think we've all been waiting for, this absolute beast, this juggernaut of a box. <laughs> it's so thick. It's a cube. It, it, you can't even call it a box at this point. Uh, and the cellophane is even having trouble staying wrapped around it, so much so that it's making it very easy for me to take it off. All right. Here we go. This is better than Christmas. This is better than my birthday. In fact, I really needed this. It was a very difficult summer. Um, so I'm glad the summer is ending with this. This is exactly what I needed. Uh, oh, look who's in here. Okay, I gotta, I think I might need to uh, get a contractor to come raise the ceiling because that might be the only way I'm ever going to get this lid off. My gosh. All right. I am very slowly easing off the lid. Okay. It took a little bit of struggle. Very careful struggling. But we got it. All right. Holy crap, that's heavy. Okay. First promo box ever to come with a rules sheet. Uh, because there's some special stuff in here, right? Null is very special. Dark Avengers, U.S. Agent, I think. Yeah. And, I mean, it's almost like Simon was listening to me, because look who they put. I mean, ah, uh, if if you guys did that for me, thank you. I don't think you did. I think you just did that because Pop Goblin's cool. But I appreciate it regardless. This is, uh, yeah, Monster Island. So this is going to go in my Fantastic Four box. I've already decided that long ago because uh, no point keeping it in here where it's going to slide around when I can easily put it in a Fantastic Four where it belongs with Mole Man's other stuff. Tokens. Gorgeous token. Oh yeah, this is Chameleon. That's Chameleon and there he is. <laughs> Great. The Wrecking Crew. Beautiful, beautiful dashboard for the Wrecking Crew. Oh, and now this. All right, I gotta be, I gotta be breezy. I really can't make this video too long, so I'm gonna carefully ease this sucker out. Oh, okay. Let's just start from the top and work our way to the bottom. There we go. All right. It's just the box needed to be not broken, but broken in. That's what it needed, because these kind of raw cardboard boxes need a little bit of uh, just a little bit of use before they start being opened carefully. Whoa! Okay. Sorry, that was a very tense moment. I was trying real hard to just make sure I do that without breaking anything. Wow! I can smell the new board game smell coming out of this box. And it's really making me happy. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to go like this. And we're going to start with the bottom. First of all, Iron Lad. There you go, buddy. There's your new home. Okay, cool. All right, and then who do we got here? Wiccan. There's Wiccan. All right. Wow. Well, I mean, I don't want this video to be six hours long, but I do want to admire these. Their speed. It's funny, this bottom row is actually characters I'm more interested in than the middle row, but c'est la vie. That's how it worked out. Patriot and Kid Loki sitting on the Destroyer's head. Everybody says the Destroyer should be a villain, but he seems so generic to me. I'd be okay if they didn't do Destroyer. Black Knight, awesome. I'd rather have Malekith, if we're being honest. 
There's Siren. She looks just like the Banshee figure. My goodness. It's going to be hard telling them apart if they ever play together. Even if they're painted, because they have the same color scheme. Woo, Werewolf by Night. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Oh, I really hope... If season four is what it, I hope it is, man, we get Encanto the Living Mummy and Manphibian and Simon Garth the Zombie, Wong's beautiful base. That would be absolutely crazy. Okay. Ooh, Elsa Bloodstone feels very solid. That is a thick, solid miniature. She's standing on like a dragon, a dead creature. Great. All right. All right. <laughs> I really should have started with the second tray because the second tray is going to be a downgrade from this. Look at that. There's Nicholas Cage. Sorry for all the noise upstairs. Um, they're just doing their thing upstairs and sometimes their thing can get a little noisy. There's Man Thing. And now we also know we're getting Swamp Thing, so I'm finally going to let those two meet and team up to do stuff. All right. You convinced me, Meeple Monkey. One of the coolest mini poses even though it's one of the least cool characters in fact um my least favorite hero in this entire set but that's okay uh corsair wow yeah one of the first uh, stretch calls introduced right sorry sorry i have to hold him closer to the camera and when he showed up man that just it just let me know what i was in for and it was so exciting to know that this was going to be a season of deep cuts. And boy, did those cuts ever run deep. Right, Hepsiba? It sure, sure is, Andrew. Yep, see, she knows what I'm talking about. Raza. I think that's how you say his name. Raza. Because he's full of that razzle-dazza. Right? Lots of swords. Right? Marvel's cape game isn't great, but their sword game, on point. And everybody's favorite censored <laughs> i wonder if the youtube censors will get me if i say his name hey youtube his name is chode there we go he's got a harpoon gun ah i love that all right who do we have here oh that harpoon gun we gotta be careful with that lalandra so exciting she was missing from season two man she's a big x-men character for me and oh man dude meeple monkey I mean, that is a jacket. I hope you actually have a jacket like that in real life. If not, we got to start a crowdfunder to get you one, right? You need, to, you need to rock that jacket, my friend. Dress up as him for Halloween or something. But there you go. X-Factor Havoc in all his glory. Speaking of glory. Oh, big chunky mini incoming. It's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Don't move. She can't see us if we don't move. <laughs> Oh, man. That is great. I don't know much about this character, but, I mean, what is there to know? It's a little girl on a dinosaur. The end, right? Uh, I need to make sure that her his tail is where his tail's got to be. I think that's it. And it's everybody's favorite shed. <laughs> wow, Stature is looking pretty groovy I must say she's heavy too wow me big I know stature I know you big okay let me get her back where she's supposed to be so I think those two only you know they only go in so deep they they pop up a bit, and that's all right. Next tray. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. Next tray. Um, so this tray is full of the very tertiary X characters who I don't really know much about, so that's okay. That's Megan, I think. Okay, sorry, everybody. While I was doing that, uh, my phone ran out of memory. So I have to go back and there was a whole bunch of uh, stuff, uh, videos that I deleted from my trip to New York last year. So hopefully the phone is better. Um, and I don't need those New York videos anymore because I have put together a YouTube video on my YouTube channel of all my New York adventures. Uh, there's Chamber, really cool. 
Uh, if you want to see that New York video, I don't think I've ever talked about it. I did a walking tour of New York where I looked for all the filming locations from the Ghostbusters and Ninja Turtles movies and a whole bunch of other movies and shows. That's M. Uh, if you want to see that, it's tricky, but I can show it to you. I have it listed as private because uh, it's got some copyrighted music in it and everything. And it's just more so that stuff that I show like friends and family. I'm happy to show it to you. It's on my other channel, the Andrew Fantasia channel. Hey, there's Husk. Oh, she looks great. But uh, if you want to see that, just let me know and I'll figure out a way to send you one of the links to it. Because like I said, it's listed as private, so you can't find it just by searching for it on YouTube. But I had all that stuff saved. It's on a hard drive, so I don't need all that excess footage that was just sitting in my phone taking up space. And this is an old phone too. So Cypher, that's a great mini actually. For a character I didn't care about, Cypher, yeah, that looks great. All right, yeah, this is definitely the uh, the tray full of characters that aren't as exciting as the tray underneath it. Captain Britain, Betsy Braddock. She's got a shield and a sword. And I, I think that's just Psylocke, right? That's Psylocke, but she became Captain Britain, which is okay with me. Who is that? Oh, that's Aurora. That is a Aurora. Our, one of our missing uh, Alpha Flight Canadians. Damn, that's cool. Mr. Sam Wilson. His Captain America outfit is glorious. I really like it. Sorry. Um, I, I hope it's filming in the correct landscape mode. Because once it uh, once I change it, I don't know anymore. If it's not, I sincerely apologize. Deadlock! A 90s icon, man. Oh, so cool. I was really hoping he would show up. And he did. Ooh. Ho, 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 ho. Songbird. Wow. So, I mean, gorgeous. And again, Songbird, as well as... Cypher and Husk and M and Chamber and Megan, all of them, never heard of them until Marvel United. So there you go. Thank you. And another character I never heard of, Wolverine's son. I don't know how you pronounce his name. Is it Dakin? Is it Dakin? I'm going to say he's Dakin because that rhymes with bacon and he's Canadian and we do love our bacon. So there you go. He's got slightly different claws. He doesn't have the elbow claws anymore. That's okay. Uh, he's purple. Very nice. Yeah, I know nothing about that dude. I also, I knew about magic, but I didn't know about this dark child business. I have no idea what this is all about. But she looks like she's cosplaying as a Final Fantasy character. Okay, who's next? U.S. Agent! Yeah, man! He's got a big tire next to him. That's cool. <laughs> That looks magnificent. That is a great figure. And Red Guardian, another guy with a shield. He looks all right. He looks all right. I'm really excited for the whole Winter Guard thing. I think that's a lot of fun. Who's this? Is this uh, is this White Widow? Is that my yeah? That's my girl, White Widow. Florence Pugh, baby. We have a Florence Pugh board game now. Oh, ho. Ursa Major. Never heard of this guy either. This whole tray is just Marvel United goodness teaching me about characters I was too ignorant of. Uh -huh. Dark Star. I forgot about her from the cartoons, but when I saw the X-Men cartoons again, it reminded me. She flies in in the cartoons and she looks exactly like this and she's just awesome. So having her in the game is going to be a lot of fun. This is the most purple characters that I think we've ever had in one box. There's Moonstone, the evil Captain Marvel. Except she's not fully evil, she's purple. But then again, Apocalypse is purple. So what do I know? Somebody who should not be purple though is this guy right here. Red Hulk Smash Man. I really need to learn how to paint, even if it's just to paint him and nobody else. Oh boy. That's exciting though. That's that's a big deal character for me to get in here. But there's an even bigger deal waiting in here. You all know who it is. We're gonna save him for last though, because right now it's Agent Venom time. Again, a character I learned about 
through Marvel United. I don't know who this guy is. Now I do. Now I know it's Flash Thompson and he has the symbiote for some reason. And man, does that ever look cool. Um, I'm assuming he's working for S.H.I.E.L.D. or the FBI, hence the agent in his name. Huh. All right. Let's start with the top here. Maximus the Mad. Very basic looking guy. He's just a crazy guy with a gun. But of the Inhumans, he's the least interesting looking. Maybe that's why he's the villain. He's jealous. It's like all my fellow Inhumans look great. Like Crystal's got her water thing and Medusa's got her hair. And I'm just a guy with a gun. And that's his origin story. Uh, Crossbones. Someone who I always uh, forget is a villain in this because he always just seems like such a henchman to me. But I guess he is a Captain America villain. So yeah, throw Crossbones in here. Sorry for the focus uh, right there. We all know what Crossbones looks like, though. Oh, it's my favorite member of the Wrecking Crew. I should have saved him for last in the Wrecking Crew, but what the heck. It's Thunderball. Are there any James Bond fans in my audience? If so, tell me what you think of the movie Thunderball. Um, Pile Driver. It is, in my opinion, one of the worst James Bond movies. Um, back then, they were super stoked about filming underwater, but when you have an 18 minute long scuba diving fight, it's not interesting. <laughs> oh, Wrecker looks so cool. Sorry, I want to actually show you what he looks like. That is dope. Amazing. And Bulldozer with his Master Blaster mask. <laughs> All right. And Mr. Claw. A Fantastic Four villain and a Black Panther villain. So he covers two different rogues galleries. Mm hmm. Who's next? Enchantress. Look at this lady. Uh -huh. The purple man. I can see the purple man waiting here. There he is. He's leaning a little bit. Is he crooked? No, I think that's just how he is. He's just. Leaning Tower of Pisa. He's got a little puppet. He's a bad dude, apparently. Uh, so is Mole Man. <laughs> Look at that face. That's the face of an angel, right? He's got a stick. And his whole thing is summoning monsters, which I didn't know about him until very recently. Um, this is a fascinating villain that I really have to comprehend the rules for so that I can understand whether or not I would like it. Because... This really puzzled me. I had never heard of this whole Iron Patriot cabal thing before. High evolutionary with a mohawk. He's not quite Yondu or Gladiator levels of mohawk. So he's probably jealous about that. He has the least interesting mohawk in the cosmos. What do we have here? We have Chameleon ripping off that mask. Oh, and his, he's littered with masks on his base. Um, the Spider-Man 2 video game did Chameleon actually really, really well. Um, and spoilers for anybody who has not played that game, I apologize. Um, there is Monsieur Shocker. Fantastic. <laughs> He's going to have some fun with uh, Symbiote Spider-Man, I'll tell you that right now. Oh, look at Titania. Wow. That is a figure. That is one hell of a figure. Absorbing man, poor guy, he can't win. He has the less interesting of two wrecking balls in this box, right? He and Thunderball uh, were having a competition and Thunderball won. Crimson Dynamo. Crimson Dynamo. Paul McCartney likes the Crimson Dynamo. Don't believe me? Listen to the song. Finally, an Iron Man villain. Like, this could be our first one we've gotten in United. I could be wrong. I guess Ultron counts as an Iron Man villain, I guess. Uh, but man, it took long enough. Blastar. No, sorry, I lied. This is not Blastar. This is Abomination. He's even cooler than Blastar. Look at that jaw. Roar! That's exactly what he sounds like. He doesn't sound like Tim Roth. 
There's Blastar. He looks like one of the space lions from Twilight Imperium, but he's mean, and those lions are nice guys. He's a Fantastic Four villain, I think. Gore the God Butcher is a Four villain. He looks like he could be the exact same species as Saint Walker from DC Comics. So I might have to have Saint Walker go up against Gore the God Butcher in the future. In 2026 or whenever it is that DC Superheroes United arrives. And Null is so big. Look at that giant sword he's got. He, like next to next to a normal dude. Yeah, he's big, man. Look at that. Back to back. He's a big guy. Wow. All right. Then we're going to jump back up here because we like saving the best for last, don't we? There's the lizard. Oh, he's got the lab coat. I'm sorry. I'm a purist. If lizard does not have his lab coat, it's not lizard to me. Uh, if he just looks like a dinosaur, nah. Nah. Not for me. Okay. Guys, it's it's the moment I've been waiting for for almost two years. Hold on, let me get Lizard back in his box there. Okay. I'm touching him. I'm actually touching him. Wow, the Hobgoblin. My number one most anticipated character in this whole season. It's taking all of my willpower not to just hold him close to my actual face and to actually show him off to you right now. Seriously, it is taking more strength than I thought it would. Oh, so cool. Again, if I could paint, man. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to very quickly breeze through the cards. My God, this is a deep box. Um, I'm going to have to get creative with how I film this holy smoke that is the thickest stack of villain dashboards i have ever felt in my life I, i'm sorry if i startled everybody by raising my voice there but i was not expecting that to be that thick oh this is exciting okay oh look at all this look at all these goodies uh -huh. they feel so different i can't get over how different they feel Definitely higher quality, glossy stock. And the other ones weren't even anything to sneeze at. It's just this is even more so. Oh my God. The idea, I can't tell you enough. The idea of a thick stack of villain dashboards, how exciting that is to me. He's got a track. Oh, 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 oh the Hobgoblin's dashboard. That's right. The first time he would be defeated, he immediately gains two health. Plus one health for each thread in play. Wow. Is he a special one? No, I remember him looking pretty simple from what the description of him was. But, oh, he doesn't have much health either. He only has three, but he comes back. So it's, he basically has five. Uh, there's Cabal. So he's going to be a whole different ball game. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lizard, no health. So some of these, even though this thick stack is really making me happy, some of these are going to be put into other boxes. For example, he's going to go in the Fantastic Four box because this box is, it, historically speaking, the Kickstarter promo boxes do not give you enough room in the wells if you are sleeving cards. I understand. It's just not feasible. Um, so a lot of these guys are going to have to be moved. And that'll just help me clear up space. And hopefully it worked well with the other ones. So hopefully it will allow me to continue uh, storing everything in the boxes without too much issue. But my God, that's big. That's incredible. Okay. And then there's just all of these cards, right? Just <laughs> so many cards. That is the thickest stack of cards I've ever picked up in my life. And I have played five crowns. And if you know what five crowns is, congratulations, you are my kind of people. Okay. Uh, while I open this, I can, you know, be a gentleman and describe what five crowns is for those who don't know. So five crowns is a card game that uses what looks like normal playing cards, you know, basic playing cards, 
spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts, what? But they are special multicolored cards, and they have a fifth suit, the, the stars suit. And there's a special game you play with them that you can only play with this particular deck of five crowns cards. Uh, and you get more of them. It is like literally the box of five crowns cards has about this many in it. So it's almost like playing with three or four decks of cards as opposed to just one. But it's a very fun game, very addictive. Uh, all right, so we got some more teams. We got Young Avengers. We got Dark Avengers. Gen X, another X team who definitely needs more filling out if uh, my friends have taught me anything. Uh, the Sword Bearers of Krakoa. That sounds fun. I want to be a Sword Bearer of Krakoa. Oh, everybody's got like their own different thing there. That's interesting. Midnight Suns. Yes, please. Who is this? Star Jammers. Sorry, I changed my lighting a little bit and now I can't really see. Red Oaks, Thunderbolts, and Shield. The boring one. Sorry, guys. Shield's kind of boring. Um, and then down here, we've got all of this. And again, I'm, I'm trying to be really fast because this, this video's gone on long enough. You're probably so sick of me. I'm so sorry. I just, I know people probably wanted to see reactions and I want to make sure I give the people what they want. Yeah, shocker. <laughs> the, the shocker and symbiote Spider-Man uh, confrontation in the cartoons. I cannot do it justice, right? Christopher Daniel Barnes, that voice actor, man, he is a legend. And the way he screams... Get back here, shocker! Yeah, I can't do it. I'm not even going to attempt to do it the way he does. But uh, I'm telling you, that's going to happen. That's going to be a thing. I'm going to have that going on on my table at some point. Uh, all right. Speaking of things going on on my table, I can't promise this. But I am going to try in the very near future, maybe uh, November-ish, I'm going to try showing off some gameplay videos. We'll see what happens. Um, but I was talking to James from Digital Charcuterie, uh, and he and I were sort of spitballing ideas for how to get some more United uh, videos out there for you. And a gameplay video was one that we kept circling back to. So I'm going to try to do one of those. Yeah, these are the extra cards there. Uh, but I'm going to put my own little unique spin on the gameplay video. I might edit it up a bit and make it a little bit different just to just to throw some some of my own flavor into it so it, it looks a little different. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Ooh, these cards are sticking together like a couple of good waffles. And I hope somebody got that reference too. Ooh, they're really, really sticky. But that's okay. That's okay. It's just fresh, factory fresh cards. Maximus has a lot of uh, henchmen. Oh, do you hear that? Listen, the sound of them being pulled apart. Here. Now it's not doing it. There. Hear that? They're just... It almost sounds like they're glued together, but they're not. They're just super fresh, factory sealed. To the point where they're almost gooey, like a chewy chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> All right, that was probably the least interesting unboxing you've ever seen because it was just a guy flipping through cards without taking the time of day to really let you look at them. But like I've said numerous times now, you can absolutely 100% do that way better in Meeple Monkey's unboxing video. Uh, this is just a, a quick little look-see before I get on with the business of the day. But... I wanted to share this moment with all of you because you're all, you know, you're part of this great community with me and what a fun community it has been. And I'm so excited for more in the future, right? DC is promising some beautiful stuff. That DC um, campaign was so full uh, of stuff, of just glorious goodness. Not glorious Godfrey, he was missing, um, but just really cool stuff. It was huge. Um, and I don't know. I don't think their stretch goal box is going to be as big as this. But I think it's safe to say it is definitely going to be as big as the X-Men box. If not, 
maybe even a little tiny smidge bigger than the X-Men box. I don't know, there was a lot of stuff that got unlocked. And a lot of big stuff too, like Parallax. Parallax takes up some space, man. That is a big miniature. Um, were there any other giant ones? Yeah, there he is. Were there any other giant characters in the DC Stretch Goal box? Let me know. I am forgetting. There's the Cabal. Cabal. All right. Wasn't there a Mortal Kombat character named Cabal? Look at that. That is a five crowns deck and a half right there. That's even thicker than the one at the bottom. Did I do it? Didn't feel like I did it, but I did it. It's off. It's still so surreal. When I think back on the last year and a half, all the times that I have sat down and just daydreamed about this moment. <laughs> um, it's so nerdy, but I don't even care. That's funny. I was in a play last year. I was in a musical because I'm an actor in case uh, people did not know that about me. Um, I was in a play that I got called into last minute because they, they lost one of their actors. Uh, so I was... Beautiful cards for speed. I was sitting at rehearsal one day last... This would have been late September, early October. So pretty much a year ago. And I was sitting in the rehearsal room while we were going over choreography and I had some time and I had a notebook with me uh, for just taking notes about the play, uh, you know, acting notes and such. And I didn't have anything to do. So I literally just sat there and tried to remember every character that was coming in this whole campaign. And I jotted them all down in the notebook. And I just spent about half an hour in the rehearsal just writing down everybody's name. You know, oh, Siren's in the box. Who else? And I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, Aurora. And literally yesterday I was digging through some notebooks looking for something for my writing, uh, for my novels, and I happened to find that page of me writing character names from sitting in that rehearsal hall back a year ago, uh, waiting for my turn to do a, a song and dance number. <laughs> and now here we are one day later uh, and one year later, just finally getting to enjoy all of that. So when I say the anticipation has been fierce, I want you all to understand just how fierce it was. Uh, it, it really was a long, long year and a half. And to finally be here looking at these and holding them, like I can't believe it's real. And it makes me so happy and so grateful that, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be able to get things like this, right? Because this is not a cheap game. Um, and I was very, very close to not being able to get DC United because financially the summer really kicked my butt. Um, but thankfully I was able to, let me put that back with the rest of Wiccan. Thankfully I was able to uh, get pretty much everything I wanted to get out of DC United. Uh, so I'm, I continuously am grateful, uh, A, to be able to have this as a hobby uh, I have literally sort of let my other hobbies fall by the wayside. I used to be into Magic the Gathering. I have not bought Magic the Gathering cards since probably 2020 uh, because it's kind of gotten out of hand. And really, I would much rather be spending my money on this. Uh, and depending on who you ask, if this is cheaper than Magic the Gathering anyway. Um, so I'm so grateful that I'm, I'm able to continue to enjoy United. And I'm so grateful to the people who make United for making such a fun game and, you know, making pretty much the game I've been waiting my whole life for. And I'm also grateful for all of you, everybody who watches these videos of me ranting on like a lunatic about this board game. Beautiful. Uh, because it's, you know, that's why I make the videos. I make the videos to hopefully just entertain and have fun and, and uh, you know, make some friends along the way. And I've met so many cool people through United, right? Uh, so it's the game that keeps on giving. It literally unites folks, just like the cards themselves are trying to do. Um, and I could not be happier. I couldn't ask for a better uh, fan experience through this game. Uh, and let me tell you, as a guy who is a diehard ride or die star wars fan um it's refreshing to be a fan of something where everybody gets along let me tell you that right now because uh 
if you're looking for unity, the Star Wars fandom ain't it, unfortunately, and that's a shame. And on our, our sister channel here, Rebels, the Rebel Scum Podcast Network, um, my friend James and Brock and Rob and myself uh, and our executive producer, Heidi, um, we, we just have a lot of fun talking Star Wars, and our goal is to keep it as fun and positive as possible because nobody wants to have a bad time talking about things that they love. So we really, you know, positivity is a big deal for us. Um, and it's okay to not like something, and it's okay to like something, but in our opinion, it's never okay to attack or berate somebody else for liking or not liking something. Damn, Meeple Monkey, these are some really great cards, man. You you got good taste, my friend. This looks awesome. Look at that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I'm really grateful that this fan community has been as awesome as it is. And it's the only place you can go where you can play as a white fox lady named Hepzibah. Like, come on. Come on. What else do people expect? Oh, yeah. They have the uh, the blue thing there to see, uh, signify the star jammers. Uh, there is Husk. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's got all the different skins. Uh, sorry, I should provide some more commentary on these characters that I'm flipping through. Uh, Kid Loki. When I saw him, I got really afraid. Like, when I saw them announce him, I'm like, oh, man, are we getting kid versions of everybody? Because I didn't know that he was his own thing and he was part of the Young Avengers. I just thought, like, oh, are they scraping the bottom of the barrel? Uh, but no, that's not the case. And let me tell you, even though I'm not standing as close to the cards as I would like, because I'm trying to make sure they're in frame for all of you, I can still smell the new board game smell. It is very prevalent here. It wasn't in the other boxes but, ooh, that's nice. Um, yeah, she's cool. Yes. So I'm really happy about that new board game smile. I'm really happy about Man Thing. Uh, he has that card that lets you pick a new character. He was one of my most anticipated as well. And I was really curious how they were going to do him as a chibi. And like how his face was going to look. And literally this is exactly what I would have wanted. It's perfect, as far as I'm concerned. Megan! I love, I love, love, love that in a world of Magnetos and Dakins and Crimson Dynamos, we just got a gal named Megan running around, right? She's like, nah, B, I don't need a, I don't need a fancy name. And Moon Girl's like, don't you want to be cool like me and be called Moon Girl? She's like, no, I'm, I'm Megan, man, that's all I need. Uh, awesome. Who's next? Let me try to guess who's next. We're going alphabetical, reverse alphabetical. No, we're going actual alphabetical. So it's somebody who starts with M or N. Uh, I'm going to guess... Uh, or O. Oh, boy. I don't know. Uh, let's say... Wow. Okay, I give up. Who is it? Moonstone, of course. Okay, I'll try to do it for the next one. That's, that's cool. The evil version of Captain Marvel. And her symbol is basically like her cleavage. <laughs> kind of strange. Okay, we got dark blue coming up. Is it Patriot? It is. It is Patriot. Okay. Yeah. And I see some light blue after him. I'm going to guess that is P or Q or R or S. Is it Sam Wilson, Captain America? No, it's Raza. I forgot about Raza. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. Is it Raza? Raza? Is it Raza? Maybe. If that was me, I would be like, call me Raza. Red Guardian. David Harbour, folks. He's in a board game now. You're welcome. All right. The Winter Guard. Very cool. Red Hulk. Yes. A nice little touch that I think goes overlooked, but I love, is that these little symbols here, right? They're a lot of thought that goes into them. The Hulk's one is just a green fist. His is a red fist. The uh, Gladiator Hulk is a green fist with like a, a strap on it. So they really put time and effort into that. I can tell the next one is Songbird. Yep, I can tell from the colors. Beautiful, beautiful cards. All right. We're on to our last deck, everybody. I have no idea how long this video is going to be, but my watch says it's 2 o'clock. 
and this arrived at my doorstep just before 11 o'clock. So that goes to show how long I've been doing this. And boy, is my back starting to hurt, but that's okay. It's worth it for all of you. I'll be able to sit down shortly. Right now, uh, this box is too big uh, for me to really get a good angle if I'm sitting. Now, in this last pack, let's see what we can do. Uh, let's see if I can guess every character as they come up. Okay, so we are going in alphabetical order. We already know Elsa Bloodstone is at the bottom, so that won't count. Let's see how many points I can get. Okay, I'm just going to do that. Whoa! All right. Let's just do this. Okay, so Agent Venom. Lots of black coming up. All right, so that's not all Agent Venom. There's some a different character with black cards underneath him. That's cool. His eyes are interesting. Uh, again, I never knew much about this character. So, after Agent Venom, who will be wearing black? I'm going to guess... Uh, oh, no, it's not Black Bolt. Is it Black Knight? Is there another character whose name starts with A? It's Aurora. Yeah, it's Aurora. That's who it is. I forgot about you, Aurora. I'm sorry, and you're Canadian. I feel especially bad now. She's like, don't worry about it, eh? That's because that's how everybody thinks Canadians talk. Uh, I know a lot of people who say A, by the way. Uh, I'm not one of them. I'm, I'm a terrible Canadian. I, I don't like hockey. I don't like Tim Hortons. I don't say A. Uh, I apologize. I'm giving a bad name to the cliche. Next has got to be Black Knight, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So there's one point for me so far. I guessed one. I see blue next. Okay. So uh, I think we're done with the bees. I think that's going to be... Uh, who's blue? Who's blue in here? Is it Chamber Husk? No, it's not Chamber Husk. Uh, oh boy, who could that be? Uh, Corsair? Is it Corsair? That's my guess. No, it's Captain America. Of course, of course. All right. There he is. Beautiful cards. So the next one I see is pink. I'm going to take a stab and say that's Captain Britain, right? That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. All right. Two points for me. So far, I'm not doing as well as I thought I would. Uh, all right. Lovely. Okay, next I see some... Is that green? It looks green in this light. I could be wrong. Uh, it could be gray, too. I'm going to guess... Chamber. Yeah! Okay. All right. Yeah, this guy's interesting, man. Didn't know anything about these Gen X kids. Because that was never my forte. Uh, let me put that there. Oh, and Chode was already spoiled. Too bad. Uh, but after Chode, I am fairly sure it's Corsair. So that's my next guess. I love you, Chode. You are something else, my friend. Yeah, Corsair. All right, I got three points. Okay, I see yellow after him. Um, it's going to be... Cypher. No. Yes? No. Core, core, core. <laughs> Why is this so hard? Um, no, it's not yellow after him. It's gray. So it's going to be Cyborg Spider-Man. Yeah, all right. What is that? Four points now? And then after him is Cypher. His cards look amazing. I'm, I'll be honest. His cards actually look fantastic. Uh, much more interesting than him, the character. There's a, so many other spider people we could have gotten to, like Spider-Man characters. But that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Cypher is next. Yeah, okay. I think I have five points now. Let's see if I can make it to eight points. Because uh, I don't think there's enough left in here for me to get to ten. Okay. After Cypher, Cypher, after Cypher, there's like a darker yellow. So it's somebody with a D. Um, I'm going to guess Dakin. Again, I hope I'm saying his name right, but he's Bacon, right? He's Bacon. Yeah, okay, six points. Okay, Dakin, lovely. Cool, cool. I like his khakis and they're all torn up. Okay, after him, there's somebody with black cards. D, D. I don't think it's Deathlock. I think the gray one is Deathlock. So there's somebody between Dakin and Deathlock alphabetically. Um, this is my only 
real chance to get a seventh point here. Uh, bu -bu -bu I don't know, I don't know. It's not Hepzibah. Uh, it's not any of the other ones. Um, chamber, husk, M. Um, nope. Nope. Uh, oh boy. I just saw like a dark color. I'm going to guess who's somebody who starts with a D that's in here that I'm missing. Uh, I give up. Dark child. I always forget about her. Okay. Ugh. Terrible. Terrible, Andrew. You should, you've should. you spent a year and a half writing lists in your little book while you were supposed to be at a musical rehearsal. You should know better. All right, after her is going to be... Oh, no. Okay, hold on. I see gray. A dark star, right? It's dark star? Yes! Okay. All right. That's my seventh point, I think. I almost spoiled it for myself with the symbol. So let's let's say it's 6.5. The next one's going to be Deathlock, though. Yeah. Oh, she looks so cool. Yeah, there's Deathlock. And then we know, just because I saw the end before, that Elsa Bloodstone is the last one. Yeah. All right. Seven and a half points. Not too shabby. And then finally, way down here, tucked away, are these cards. All right. I got it. Finally, we got... Stormbreaker, a Blades Blade, <laughs> Cyclops Advisor, Daredevil's Billy Club, Psy. All right, these are awesome. These are also going to go with their respective characters for the most part, if I can find space. Like these are from the old promo box, the season one and two promo box, and I don't think there's space in there for tiny cards. Um, at least I don't remember there being any when I checked a few months ago. But I'll check again, right? The day is young. And then these ones belong to this box, actually. So these don't have to go anywhere. And if not, I can just fit the rest in here. It is not a huge, huge deal. But guys, that's the end of this unboxing. That's it. We did it. Well, my friends, that is that. That's the unboxing. I have already had a chance to play a couple of games uh, I gave myself one freebie where I don't pick a random villain because I really wanted to face the Insidious Six from the Spider-Man cartoon. So I got to do that, and that was so, so fun. Uh, and then I did another actual random generated fight like normal, and I got Emperor Doom, and man, is he hard. He destroyed me. So I'm looking forward to some more gameplay in the future, and we'll talk about what the future has in store as we continue on here to make the wait for... Oh... But hold on. I can't say that anymore, can I? I can't sign off by talking about making the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter. So we're going to have to change things up. From now on, here on Digital Charcuterie, we are going to sit and chat and continue to make the wait for DC Superheroes United a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.